The Weekly Warm Pipe. Spooky. <laughs> Is it spooky time? Spooky time. I figure most of the all the episodes have to be spooky for October, right? Yeah, I guess so. We did talk so for, about talk about what? I was saying we did talk about spooky movies last last week, so it's true. My brain is like so out in left field today. I thought it was I thought it was September for some reason today at one point. <laughs> and he's like, "Whoops!" She's like, "Dude, we're nine days into October." I was like, "Ooh!" I th- I, for some reason, I was like, "September twenty second should be here any day now." You're like, it's coming right up. I was like, two weeks off. That's oh, all right. October's here. We're talking spooky stuff. We're jumping in the war pipe. <clears throat> this episode and going back to the 90s and it's just kind of a mishmash of discussing halloween in the 90s tv shows um maybe some costumes people dressed up as happy meal toys maybe uh what are the uh, specials on tv that yep. possibly people seen and i'll add more stuff to the uh docket as we get into it i was trying to research like costumes that came out in the 90s Mm -hmm. and everything that comes up is costumes that you can wear today that are 90s right it's like dress up as the Rugrats or dress up as this person and I'm like yeah those came out in the 90s but I want to know the costumes that were released in the 90s you didn't use the word released yeah I don't know I'll, I'll try again searching that we can come back to that topic or if anyone has like thoughts or memories of like oh yeah i remember this was big you know top costume are you seeing me russ no this oh, is my gosh eos webcam utility starting off the uh the webcam's not working for technical time. difficulties already that's the spookiest scariest thing on the, on the podcast technical difficulties isn't it just isn't it just <laughs> so we'll see if uh jay will be joining us with his face or not on this episode or we'll just be my face is hideous so maybe everyone's <laughs> better off uh i did want to get into some let's see uh i put tv shows We got quite a few here we can kind of chat about. This one, TV shows and books, but the uh, the Goosebumps series was definitely big in the 90s. I certainly remember picking up the book series, maybe at one of the book fairs at school and checking out The Haunted Mask was a big one that stood out. And I think the first one was about a a haunted house i want to say i could picture the cover of this spooky house on the first book but i do think when they brought it to his tv series i think the first episode was the haunted mask i want to say welcome to dead house was that first book been quite some time since i i've read any of these but there it is there's your cover i never read any of them No, I only just watched the TV show. Okay, I feel like they did a pretty good job at adapting them. I like that cover, though. It's pretty classic looking. Yeah, I mean, the Goosebumps art was certainly fantastic. If anything alone, just collecting the books for the art is good. I have quite a few. I was trying to maybe collect first 50 or original or so i tried to get all the ones that are the original run of the goosebumps series they had a spin-off too with um slappy the, oh yeah the doll there the uh, ventriloquist doll that came out but i didn't read any of those books and all these books you can read in a day you know it's large font small small um pages amount in there sit down Knock it out in a few hours. Unless you're watching the episode, you know, half an hour then. Yeah. Who knows? Goosebumps TV series. Let's see what, what we got on that. Oh, they did do a reboot as well of 
the Goosebumps TV series on Netflix, which I didn't finish. Uh, let's see, 1995. Yeah, 1995. It had four seasons, 74 episodes. Goosebumps originally aired on YTV in English from 1995 to 2004. And then again in 2016 to 2017 in French in Canada. So it had like a year run over there. Uh, marketing for it to coincide with Fox's release of several tapes from the series, a Halloween 1998 tie-in marketing campaign with General Bills promoted the video series on 10 million packages and included with each video cassette coupons for products like fruit roll-ups and gushers. Nice. Where's Jay? I'm going to add Jay back in. I just switched cameras, so at least I'm here in some form. Fair enough. Because my other camera is being a punk right now, so... Being a punk. Better this than nothing, I guess. Hey, Rob's here. Hey, Rob. What's up, bud? <laughs> Rob from the Retro Hunters. He was a guest on, um, was it, two episodes ago. I hung out with Rob late into the evening a few nights back. Like physically at the house? I went to his house. Oh, nice. We held hands. <laughs> it was great. No, I was watching a show until 2 a.m. that he was doing. Oh, dope. Yeah. yeah. No, he lives in, doesn't he live in like California? I'm not sure where Rob lives now. You can let us know in the chat, but it's not South Carolina, I don't think. <laughs> On a side note, before we get back into the spooky topic, uh, how you doing, Jay, with the storm where you are? I know another storm's coming through. So the storm uh, that went through South Carolina um, did not affect this nearly as bad as it affected the people in the north in North Carolina, especially the Asheville area. Uh, those people have terrible conditions and I feel terrible for them. Um, but um, the one going through Florida right now is not affecting us whatsoever. Um, but it's affecting, you know, people like Tampa Bay area. So we are pretty lucky here where I am. So we're doing good, but thank you for asking. But everybody else, they probably need lots of prayers and help and whatever they aid they can get. So absolutely. Absolutely. Um, thoughts on, we were talking goosebumps. You said you watched the series. Uh, yeah. So I just remember there, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but I remember there being a big marketing campaign that, that goosebumps was going to be coming on TV. And, uh, it may have been around Halloween time. Um, and I remember watching it in my bedroom. I don't remember what the episode was about. Um, but I remember the intro you know, being oh, a little yeah. spooky and I kind of liked that. It almost reminded me of like a, are you afraid of the dark type intro? Mm -hmm. And is it, is it the one where he goes, children beware you're in for a scare? Like, yeah, is there yeah. a way to watch that on, on stream here? That would be yeah. kind of rad. I mean, I guess regardless, so I'm sure we're going to be de demonetizing this, not that we're making much of anything on this podcast. Oh yeah. We monetization are. on YouTube. Thousands. I'm getting that. rich off this podcast, aren't you? <laughs> You're not getting all the money that I'm seeing. Goosebumps intro. Edwin's video games. All right, let's see. Let's remove that. And let's bring up the YouTube page so you guys can see the intro. Yeah, I love this. R.L. Stein. Children beware. And those are all his stories, you know, the goosebump stories going out into the just how it changes everyone with the G. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. The scary eyes of the dog that turned yellow. Going up the stairs, creeping into the house. 
What is this crap? <laughs> now I can't see the intro because of the stupid. Check out this video next. Viewer beware. Oh, viewer beware. There it is. Good enough. There we go. Pretty cool. We got the idea. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for nothing. Golden gaming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Edwin says, sup, I love me some Goosebumps art. I know we were saying how awesome the the art is just looking at it. Like, I feel like I just want to collect the books just for the art if I'm not even going to read it. And the intro certainly is nostalgic. For sure. Hold on. Bloody Bones says, I watched Goosebumps on channel 21 and read all the books. I still had my collection of Goosebumps books that I gave to my sister but she still has all of them to this day. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Bloody Bones is local to me. So he watched Goosebumps on the same Fox 21 channel that I watched Goosebumps <laughs> on, which is like, pretty freaking rad. I like that you guys remember the channel. Like, I have no clue what channel it was on on TV. That's for sure. But I remember watching it for sure. Um, Let's see. It said... I'm on the Wikipedia page again here. Yeah, Haunted Mass was the first episode that came out. I don't know why they didn't want to do to Welcome the Dead House. Maybe they just thought the Haunted House was a little bit better story, so to go. But who's Erie, Erie, Indiana? Is that related to Goosebumps? Erie, Indiana. Sounds familiar. Oh, it's a TV series. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I remember this one. Sci-fi, 1991. There was only one season of this here. I like the cover of it. I'll bring this up here. Present share screen, Erie, Indiana. It's an American horror science fiction television series that originally aired on NBC September 15th, 1991 to December 9th. The series was created by Jose Riviera and Carl Schaffner. Um, total 19 episodes were produced. The final episode aired for the first time in 1993 when the series was syndicated on the Disney Channel. Interesting. The series revolves around Marshall Teller, a teenager whose family moves to desolate town of Erie, Indiana. Population <laughs> 16,661. I see how they have the 666 in there. <laughs> well, moving into his new home, he meets Simon Holmes, one of the few normal people in Erie. Together, they are faced with bizarre scenarios, which include discovering a sinister group of intelligent dogs that are planning on taking over the world and meeting a tornado hunter who is a reminisce of Captain Ahab. This sounds, yeah, I mean, very similar to a Goosebumps vibe and jumping on that, like, spooky series, for sure, with the kids and stuff. I can't say I've ever seen it, so that'd be interesting to see if any of the episodes are on YouTube or anything. Yeah, you love the show, and was so upset about them canceling the series. I guess they just didn't have the the backing as Goosebumps since Goosebumps had the the book tie-ins already. So you already had that core audience who liked to read books and was just checking out the uh you know this TV series based on the books. And then you had the new people jumping on the train there as well. It came from the basement was the first Goosebumps book. I could have sworn it was the other one. Maybe not. Maybe you're right. We could let's fact check that first. What is the first Goosebumps book? List of Goosebump books on Wikipedia. It says uh no, welcome to Dead House. First one. Stay out of the basements, number two. So that settles that one up there. We also lost Jay. If you're curious on why 
we don't hear Jay. Maybe his computer probably shut down or something like that with technical difficulties. <laughs> he had used his uh, laptop camera or webcam or whatever to jump on, but he has since disappeared. As he texted me, I don't know. Let's see. He sent me an image. My computer just crashed. Fantastic. If Rob, if Rob, you want to jump on for a hot minute, I can send you an invite. What is happening, Russ Lyman? How's it going? Hey, Rob. <laughs> thanks for thanks for jumping in while we wait for Jay. <laughs> no it's serendipity, my friend. Nineties <laughs> Halloween stuff. Yeah, I had a few oh, shows. Baby. I, have you ever heard of that eerie Indiana show we were talking about? Dude, I so for me, eerie Indiana. So, okay, uh, Goosebumps and eerie Indiana, I believe, were part of like the local Fox station. Okay. And so, yeah, dude, you would get you would get those in a block. I don't remember. I don't think it was uh, like daily. I think it was more of like a weekly thing. But man, I'm I'm telling you, I. It should not have scared me as much as the, as like at the age <laughs> I was at those shows should not have scared me. But for some reason, dude, they freaked me out so much. I was not like a big watcher of them, but I was very familiar. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because, you know, they're kind of low budget because it's technically like TV series, right? They're not pumping millions of dollars into it like a feature film or whatever. So some of the effects are like, meh, but yeah, totally like, oh, one of my favorites is, uh, oh, what was it? It was the mutant. On Goosebumps? Yes. What was his, what was the name of that book? Um, uh, Attack of the Mutant. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm trying to think it was, was it the episode of the, like, she goes to the library and he's a mutant? Or no, or like a bug? Okay. So, uh, I read a lot of the books as a kid, too. So okay. that was part of it, too. It's like, you read the books and then you want to see the show. Um, no, he almost looked, like, if you look it up, it was Goosebumps, Attack of the Mutant. He almost, like, do you remember Bible Man? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I remember he this. Had, <laughs> he kind of had that vibe going, and like the whole thing was like, I don't know, like he had a fortress in the middle of town that was invisible. Uh, oh yeah, dude, right there, top left, there it is. Yeah, yeah. So there's the, the book. book. Yeah, I mean, obviously going for like a Batmanish superhero, like he kind of looks like there, and then you can see on the the TV oh, series, you're like <laughs> almost a remind because he's blue, kind of reminds me of the Tick. Yeah, dude. Oh, he's definitely got like live action tick and Bible man vibes. Oh, man. And it was a two parter, it says part two. So maybe it was a, a two parter for the series. That was one of their ones. They were like, we're going to lean into this hard and you're going to love it. <laughs> dude, that's so good. Attack of the Mutant. And again, yeah, this the art's so great for sure. on the Goosebump <sighs> books. I still remember there was one of them. Um what was oh, oh i don't remember what was the name of it it was the camp oh goosebumps it was like these a brother and a sister go to camp okay camp nightmare Is that yeah, the I, maybe welcome to camp nightmare i think that's what it was called the ending of that book is a banger like i anybody you're not too old go read a goosebumps the ending of that book is so good <laughs> yeah dude. i mean what's it going to take you uh, an hour or two to go through this exactly Oh my gosh! Geez, someone's selling this for forty-eight bucks on uh, on Amazon. Oh my gosh! You have to get that. Got to get that paperback. Oh, now they did do a. As you can see on here, on we're looking at the images. They did like re-releases where it's a different cover art, same story. I assume. Oh, interesting! I've never seen those. So you know, I've, I'll frequent Savers and Goodwill to try to find these. And I'll be looking in the, in the book section and then I'll oftentimes find these where it's the re-release. And I'm like, no, you know, I like the the classic one instead here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good, I guess, if you want to read the story. And kind of neat that they redid it and the, the logos changed a little bit. It went with white instead of the purple up here. But yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of the original for sure. Right, right. So, oh my gosh, we'll see. Yeah, uh, the I think the first Goosebumps book that I read was uh, the what was uh, the Werewolf. What was that called? See, oh yeah, I yeah, I can picture all the covers too. The Werewolf Swamp, maybe. 
Like if he's in a swamp, I know. I see. Yeah, he's like howling and like standing on the side of the banks of the river. The werewolf of Fever Swamp. You're close yes. on that one. Yes. Yes. Dude. Great art for time. sure. I just love the colors oh. and everything of that. So so 90s for sure. I love it. I love it. Yeah, dude, go. I would say go back if you've never or if you've never read a Goosebumps book or if it's been a long time. I invite you all go back. <laughs> read some Goosebumps. It'll be good for you. <laughs> head, head to a Goodwill or a Savers and see if you can grab any. Totally. If you, you just show up at your local library and be like, yeah, where's the Goosebumps section? It'll be fine. Nobody will ask any questions. <laughs> that is curious, too. I wonder if the libraries have the Goosebumps books there. Maybe. Oh, I dig it. Dude, I, next time I go, I'll look. I haven't visited one in, in quite some time. <laughs> I was going to add Jay, and literally his camera broke again. I see. There he is. There oh, he is. Man. Oh, Jay. No, no, I was trying to. I was trying to use the uh, the cannon again, but it's just I don't know. I don't know Jay. what happened tonight. It's not what it looks like, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing together, man? <laughs> just kidding. I was like, no, I appreciate here, you, know you coming in and saving the day, Rob. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, dude. I'm sitting here, I'm editing, I'm trying to finish up a video that I'm going to try to put out in the next day or so. So I was watching mm. you guys, and I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll jump in, why not? Sweet. No, yeah, I don't know. My computer is probably, like, just on its last leg. So I don't know. Me and Russ have been stretching this thing out as long as we can. We'll hopefully can last a little longer, but... Yeah, I have I have my old computer for you. I just have to get it situated and then shipped out to you. I got a box and everything, so... Currently, yeah. So hopefully, we'll, we'll f- keep fingers crossed that I stick around. I don't know when or why it decides to crap out, but yeah, I don't know. I think the first sign of things going bad was the camera cutting out, and then mm-hmm. out of nowhere, I was in the middle of a, of a statement, and boom, just shut it down. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so we did goosebumps, and then maybe for the older kids, they did have the tales from the crypt, right? Oh yeah. Now, this did air first in 1989, but there were seven seasons, so it went through the night. It was more in the 90s, right? For so six, six at years. some point, Tales from the Crypt was syndicated, and Fox played it. Uh, Fox 21 here in Greenville played it uh, at midnight on Saturday Ooh. nights, and I would stay up till midnight, and, it, and I would watch. I think, I think it came on like back-to-back. And I was obsessed with it. One of the my best favorite episodes was um, there was an episode, and it has this really famous actor. He's an older guy, uh, very distinguished, distinguished face. Um, okay. He actually plays the um, the neighbor on Christmas with the Cranks, and the story is about like I guess the wife has like a bunch of pets. Okay, and he, like taxidermies them or something. <laughs> And at the very end, she has him taxidermied or something. I can't remember exactly. Oh, wow. Okay. But it was a pretty cool episode. I hope I explained that well. I'm hooked. I'm ready. Let's find it. (laughs) And definitely having the intro with with the Crypt Keeper really, really made it. You know, you get, again, that intro standing out where you're you're making your way towards the Crypt. And then he just turns to face the camera and with that laugh. Mm-hmm. I love that. <laughs> and I think it was originally on, I want to say HBO or something. It was, right? yep. Yeah. So if you didn't subscribe to HBO, you weren't able to, to catch it until it was said moved to Fox. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find the name of this episode. Bloody Bones said, Yep, I watched Tales from the Crypt on Fox 21 as well. <laughs> that one was too spicy for me, too, man. Like when it was in its heyday, I, we didn't have HBO. So like, yeah, I, I could only catch it if I was like over to a friend's house. And again, I don't know what it is, man. The scary stuff gets me every single time. Okay. I'll give you a read down of this. Okay. I think the name of it might be Jonas. It says Jonas is the main character in the episode collection completed. A recently retired man. He becomes fed up with, with all the animals wife keeps around the house and turns a way to get rid of the animals. Oh, Emmett Walsh. M. Emmett Walsh was the was the actor. Okay. So yeah, if that was that episode. I don't know if I can find a release date for it. Sounds creepy enough for sure. Yeah, it's yep. all Christmas, Christmas with the Cranks with Tim Allen. 
That's oh, it. dude, M. Emmett Walsh. Yeah, I can't guy. find a release date of that episode. So it does have um, Robert yeah. Zemeckis is listed as executive producer as well with some other people there. And I did see Danny Elfman do some of the uh, scores. Danny Elfman? What? <laughs> did Danny Elfman also did he did Danny Elfman also do the the voice for the Crypt Keeper? And I don't know. I'll have to look that up. But D- Danny Elfman does movie soundtracks, so he's done Batman, Batman Returns. No, no. no. I was talking about I was talking about the original person you said. Oh, I wasn't uh, referring to Danny Elfman. I was referring to the other name you said. No, no, Robert Zemeckis. Yeah, Robert Zemeckis. I don't know who that. Um, uh, obviously, just, everybody knows who Danny Elfman is. Uh, well, <laughs> Zemeckis is a producer. Done Back to the Future and oh. a few other stuff. Uh, let's see. Who is the oh, I guess I should know who that is, but I don't. <laughs> I don't think it looks like a guy named John K- Kasser or Kai- K- Kaser. Okay. That, that's it. Yeah, you're right. It is John. Kaser. Yep. Like that? Yeah. I rec- like, I recognize K- 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 like, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it is. Kaser. Interesting, dude. So, yeah, laugh just yeah. as soon as when the show was starting. <laughs> <laughs> Tales from the crypt. <laughs> no way, dude. And yeah, I say a kids show. At a certain point, it was like animated. Yeah, I think so. Yep, oh. they sure did. Because I, mean, I brought I mean, it up on my one and only ever episode of Saturday Super Show. I will say there's so many R-rated movies and stuff that became kids shows, right? There was a RoboCop like kids show, like cartoon. You're like, what? Like Toxic Crusader was like a B horror movie. Yeah, so it's like kids show. Why not? Sure. Yeah, kids show. Kids will love this. (laughs) Manny Manny's arcade says, "Why does the Crypt Keeper have Chucky's eyes?" That's a great question. I think. I want oh, to say I heard something about this where he, it's literally actually Chucky's eyes. I think like they needed eyes for the puppet and they might have reused Chucky just good really? for the prop. I want to yeah. say that story is like legitimate. <laughs> you heard it here on the internet, folks. It has to be true. It has to be true. Dude, don't even get me started on Chucky, bro. That's childhood trauma right there. <laughs> yeah. Chucky was something I don't, I don't think I've ever watched a full Chucky movie. Not an original. No? Okay. I think I watched Bride of Chucky, which was pretty terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I know I know I'm losing the plot here, but the original Child's Play, oh my gosh, dude. I had a do you remember the My Buddy doll? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Dude. Just it was the perfect meld of childhood trauma. <laughs> yeah, my buddy was terrifying. <laughs> my buddy and child's play. I don't know how I saw that movie as a kid, but that was bad news, man. It was bad news. Yeah. Uh. I guess on a lighter heart, we could talk about the Simpsons uh, Treehouse of Terror, right? Treehouse yeah, of Horrors. Or Terror. I guess tree, tree, TT would be <laughs> too obvious. <laughs> Treehouse of Horrors. That's right. Definitely some fantastic episodes on there and seemed to be like a staple as a kid when mm-hmm. Halloween came around. You're like, oh, man. Like, because then it was broken up into sh- like short stories yep. that you would see similar to like Tales from the Crypt and all that, so they're kind of mimicking those. There was one where Homer goes in like this 3D world that was pretty weird. Yeah. yeah. Oh, where like, he goes pretty... through the wall and yeah. then he's he's like stuck in 3D world. Yeah. That was pretty. Does he end up in? Does he like come out of a wormhole and then he's like in like the real, real life? World? I think so. Maybe so. It ends with him like going into a uh, adult cake shop. I think <laughs> he's like walking down the street, possibly. Yeah. yeah. That was a weird one. Um, I love the aliens they have on there. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot their names. That they're, they're in the big, Cr- big like, and something maybe. Mike yeah. says my favorite one is the one where the crusty doll comes alive. Yeah, Again, and, I mean that would definitely mimic Chucky, right? I'm sure that's what the inspiration was for right there. There's another good one where they. Uh, they do the um oh my god what is it what is that show called um where the where the monsters on the wing of the airplane oh what is that? yes twilight zone twilight zone yes thank you william shatner it was yeah in the movie there, there's something Later, on the plane something on the wing <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah that was that was cool that they seen that there yeah that they mimic that 
Dude, the one where the where they get abducted, like talking about the aliens, where they get abducted, and it's yeah. all about like they think they're fattening them up so that they can cook them. Oh, oh that's yeah, what, I mean it's classic, but that's right. what well, that that was again another throwback to one of the uh, Twilight Zone <laughs> episodes where the aliens come to Earth and they have like a book and they are like cooking for them, and the book says like I think yeah. like how to cook for mankind or something i don't know there was something covered on it and at the end of the episode it was like how to cook mankind yeah like, okay we're yeah. gonna eat you so I, I believe that was a play on that like how to cook humans how to cook for humans right how yeah to cook 40 humans <laughs> right yeah, right exactly. something like that Blowing the dust off. <laughs> yeah that's exactly classic one for sure with his mouthful no one and I mean, no one eats Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the Shining one was really good, too. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. We brought that up a few times where they mimic the Shining and Homer is uh, Jack Nicholson's character there in, in the Shining. And there's one where the end of it, they're talking about this fog that'll turn your body inside out. And it turns into this whole like song and dance montage where their bodies flip inside out. And every time they step blood squirts all over the tv does Dude. anybody remember that mm-hmm. oh yeah i mean i imagine because there's a movie called the fog so i assume again inspiration from that actually yeah. that okay so thinking about the fog that was like turning people inside out that reminded me of uh my favorite of all time is i think i believe it's called the ho mega man and it's the one where everybody dies but homer is the only one who's alive so he's like last man on earth He's the last man on earth. He's sitting in traffic and nobody's moving. And he realizes that everybody else is dead. And he's like, I can finally do what I've always wanted. And it just is a hard cut to him dancing naked to war. <laughs> in <the> church. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my God. This came out October 26, 1997 Treehouse of horror. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, number eight. Yeah. In this episode, Homer is the only survivor of a nuclear blast until a group of mutants come after him. Homer then buys a transporter, which Bart uses to switch bodies with a housefly. There's one where he keeps like changing, like the outcome of time with like a toaster. Yes. yes. All all I remember is this line where he goes, I wish I wish I hadn't killed that fish. That's the only (laughs) part I remember the whole show. Because he goes he goes back in, in time or whatever. And he's like, you know, dinosaur land or whatever. And he, he's like, all right, don't move. And then he had made a step and, and crushed a fish. Yeah. So then when he went back, he come, he's in the basement. So he comes upstairs and then notice stuff changed. So then, yeah, he's trying to find his regular universe and everything will be slightly tweaked. Like, I remember, too, he like went to one and everything was like seemed all right. And then he ended up freaking out, leaving. Because he asked them, oh, well, like, I'll have a donut. And they're like, what are donuts? Oh, yeah. And, then, and he leaves. And then, <laughs> and then it starts raining donuts there. Yeah. In that world. Yep. And it's like, oh, it's raining again. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then at the very end of it, he comes back and everything's almost like 99 percent normal. Except at the very end, when they start eating their food, I think they have like crazy weird tongues. That, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, eh, close enough. Close enough. <laughs> I had bought, um, we had gone on a trip uh, a while back and I had seen the DVD box set of one of those. So I had picked that up. So I'll have to try to dig it out so we can watch some of those. Yeah, Yeah. I have a, I have a couple little loose, loose DVDs where they have those on there. So. Oh, what is this one? Manny's saying nightmare on evergreen terrace street was amazing. Is that the one where Willie was like the, was like Freddie or not, not. Was it Fred? Yeah, like Freddie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, dang, that's smart weather. Because <laughs> it fit perfect because he was like, I don't know, like the maintenance guy or. Yeah. And he's already like looking kind of like Freddy ish. Right. So like good. A claw. I think he had a rake maybe or something. Right, like right. I think it was a rake. <laughs> I'm sure you could probably find some of these episodes just on YouTube searching it, but. Probably so. Um. I, again, I was talking, I was trying to research and I couldn't get anything to come up with. I wanted to talk about the costumes of the 90s, but 
I try to, you know, search it into Google and it's just showing me costumes that you would wear now to represent the 90s. Uh, gotcha. And I'm like, the only one I know that would come out is obviously the Ninja Turtles were really big. So I'm sure a bunch of people were dressing up as Ninja Turtles. I'm surprised I never wanted to be a turtle. Hmm. Dude, I was Raphael one year. Nice. And then when I think about a 90s costume, the worst one was I had this what looked like a very cool like bat like Batman Returns oh, era. Yeah. Batman. Okay. But the cowl was like cloth like this mixture of like that weird cloth foamy type of stuff. So the ears would just constantly like do this. No. <laughs> so then my mom tried to stuff them with like tissue. So mm. they would stay up, but they just were all wonky. It was really bad. <laughs> You're like, uh, good execution, but it failed. Yeah, it was cute. <laughs> um, Andy's chiming in and says he remembers Goosebumps costumes were big. Hmm. So you probably could have dressed up as like Slappy, maybe had the mask from that, oh, that yeah. series. Um, I'm not sure who else would be from. Goosebumps that stands out as a character. I'm sure for little kids, there are a lot of Barney costumes out there. Right. Barney, Elmo, I Power Rangers. Yeah, that's true. Power Rangers is probably a real big costume for kids in the 90s. I just remember, dude, it was just the plastic mask with the rubber band. Right. Well, that's what I'm going to say. Most of these costumes <laughs> were, were packed in. You just get a the plastic, plastic mask. Yeah. And with a little slit for your mouth that you can barely breathe out of. And then maybe like a t-shirt or something that well in the weird. 80s everything was plastic so it was like these plastic full body plastic outfits you put on and i had i was a care bear one year probably like 1986 and even on the on the on the front of the thing it said care bears i'm like why does it say care bears <laughs> <laughs> is it necessary to like say what it is it's in case people didn't know when you get but they the came door. in a box a little box right and it had the mask yeah. on the front and you could see through the little clear window and it was like this little plastic outfit folded up. It's like, what a what a weird idea for costumes. Well, they I mean, did a flammable, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. They did a throwback. If you if you visit the Spirit Halloween store with the Star Wars costumes, so that you know they were in a box with C three PO's mask, mm-hmm. Yoda, Darth Vader, you know, just like it was from the seventies and all that. So it was kind of like a throwback to that. You should Google 80s. Pla- I know we're talking about 90s, but just they're so weird. He's like, I just want to see the 80s ones. The 80s costume. plastic Halloween costumes. Oh, God. This is type, nightmare. Type in Care Bear. Nightmare you'll fuel. Find, you'll probably find the one I wore. Uh, let's see. I'll oh, bring this man. up in here. This is bringing back so many wonderfully terrible memories. <laughs> right? Oh, my. Yeah, dude. Yeah, those yeah, are the- so. Yeah, it does say care care chair bear. Well, no, it says chair bear on this one. So yeah, that's mine the... was mine was brown. Okay, but looked very similar. It's so funny though that like that Flintstones costume, like it looks nothing like Fred, except that he has a picture of himself and then the mask, kind of. But like, like right, what a, right, like what a weird concept, right? To have like a picture of yourself on your outfit. Oh, oh yeah, at, and all these. Look yeah. at the GI Joe one. <laughs> It's just like a it looks like a sleeping deal. bag. It's literally just like it's a, just like an advertisement. Hey, oh, kids, don't forget wild. to buy a G.I. Joe while you're that popple one's pretty cool. And what's wild is like this was like this was it. This was the height of it. This like, is it. You're rocking some of these, man, especially like these these uh, like well-known IPs. Yeah, yeah. You were, you were the talk of the schoolyard, man. This was it. <laughs> so this was probably it cuts off. This is probably still late 80s, but we got Dude, look at that go by now in a go bot. And Big that Bird is actually kind of sick. Dude, Big Bird looks like he might murder somebody. <laughs> is that He Man? I thought it was. No, that's Chuck, Chuck Norris. Norris, dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Chuck Norris. Oh, that's so good. Bloody Bones is saying, though, Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe, and He Man and Transformers were big for costumes. Ghostbusters oh, yeah. E- easily. <laughs> yeah, G.I. Joe, I'm sure it was similar to something like that there for sure. Mm hmm. Oh my god! But anyway, those were worth looking at for a second. <laughs> I love it. Nightmare you know what fuel. else we could talk about, Russ? Yeah, one of my favorite things ever: the McDonald's Halloween pumpkin like buckets that you. The buckets. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I just had a lady give me a 1991 witch in uh McPumpkin and a and a McBoo from 1986. Nice. Wow. That's like, rad. Yeah, they're sweet. They're my work. Now, did they have the um the lids or just Yeah, like, no, they did have the lids. Um and the uh, the ones from 91 had a special feature where the lids were cookie cutters. Oh, that's cool. Right? I was just talking about how I feel <laughs> chipped off so they they came out um maybe two years ago. Yeah. And I picked up the ghost one. We had gotten it with the stupid plastic piece in the middle. And and it's like, instead of a lid, it's like connect it to the handle mimicking a lid. It's like from afar. It looks like a lid. Right. And in packaging marketing marketing. And you're like, Oh, it's a lid. And you're like, no, it's just open. You have the thing. I have the bucket somewhere close. It's the too. dumbest <laughs> thing. I have one downstairs. It's the stupidest thing ever, Rob. If you don't I know what we're it. talking about, dude, I I have no like, idea. Like, how much more plastic would it have take to actually make an actual lid? Oh, I guess I could just Google. I got it. one. Like, I'm looking yeah, for it. Yeah, let's look this up. Let's look at this. But they one. are re-releasing them this year, and it's the same nonsense. Yeah, it's like like McDonald's. You suck. Go fix this immediately. <laughs> Okay, here's shots fired. Uh, shots fired. So see how it's across the, across the top. It's just and you can it, even see underneath it. You can see the like. Here's the gap. The other right side. There, like, there's a gap. But is it's that terrible. like? Is it is it flat? It like, is, is flat. It the yes, same width as the handle. Like yep. it's not like this. Here's your lid. Like that's a solid. real lid. But these these are just like it just goes across and mimics a lid. And also, whose idea was it to make these new? These new stupid things here. Look at them right there. They're like furry with weird eyes. You see them? What are you talking? Oh, these things? That's this year's. This is this year's. Yes. Where's McBoo? Oh. Where's McWitch? Where's McPumpkin? <laughs> what are these things? Well, you've got McBlue Monster, McOrange Monster, McGreen Monster, and McWhite Monster. <laughs> yes. Gosh. Maybe I should be thankful that they have met all, but. Guess, yeah, beggars can't be choosers. Maybe right. this will be for the kids. Like they'll remember these buckets as we remembered the well, the good quality ones. Because I'm, a, because I'm, I can't help myself. I will go buy them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're your own worst enemy. <laughs> exactly. You guys got any more of those boo buckets that really suck? Give me that give me dumb. Mc, <laughs> give me dumb McGreen, please. <laughs> Uh, Manny says, I remember always wanting those movie studio quality latex mask back in the nineties, but they were always so expensive, especially the Batman returns mask. You know what that reminded me of? Mm -hmm. Remember Spencer's Spencer's always had like premier masks. Yeah, that's true. They did have a pretty good selection there. I mean, I go there or party city and I definitely, I have. Um, my Batman mask from from back in the day, and it was a nice rubber one that you pull over. I don't know how much it was, and obviously it's it's one of those like one size fits most type things. So <laughs> right, you're like it's kind of loose on me or for right. whatever you know. You got to pull the Velcro tighter in the back. <laughs> like one size fits <laughs> most. That's hilarious. Um, you know what I always wanted back in the day? I always wanted that Freddy claw that looked so realistic. Nice with the big knives. Yeah, you you probably have one, Russ. Yeah, I picked up um one a few few years ago when I was doing my NES uh, Freddy cosplay. Essentially, um, I have a cheap one that came with the costume that was like terrible. But then they sell the standalone Freddy glove, and they have different tiers you can get. I think this one was like fifteen bucks, but they had one that was like fifty dollars. Right, like, pretty good. And I'm like. Yeah, I'm gonna end up painting it anyways. I think I ended up getting in my own like leather glove and attaching it to there, so kind of doing my own stuff with it. But kind of like a little, a little mashup, right? Yeah, for sure. I was gonna bring up Jay since, uh, well, we're still we'll we'll keep it going with McDonald's since we're okay. On McDonald's. I like I it. I know you want to mention the. Um, the nuggets, right? Yeah, because they had like little Halloween chicken McNugget buddies. Yeah, the little McNugget buddies. Yeah, for Halloween. You remember these <laughs> little Halloweenies? Let's Did, see. Couldn't you like take the costume off of them too? Like, you yeah, yeah, stuff and stuff like that. Yep, mix, like mix and match. 
Heck yeah. Oh, I got to put Halloween. They're just showing me pictures of regular nuggies. <laughs> well, hey, dudes, I uh, thanks for letting me jump in. I, I'm yeah. sorry. I got to go, Dad. I got to get the kids in bed, but I really appreciate it. No, absolutely. You no, jump. thanks for saving me, Rob. Appreciate you. Oh, dude, anytime. You guys have a lot of fun, and you I'll too. see you soon. Thanks, buddy. Exit. Later, man. All right, back back to Russ and Jay show here. Appreciate his <laughs> efforts. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. We got the McNugget buddies here with their Halloween costumes. Oh yeah, those are so fun. They got. Uh, let's see, Frankenstein, a witch, a ghost, a mummy, a vampire, and a pumpkin. Yeah, I love those. Nineteen ninety two set of Ooh. seven. We were just eleven years old, Russ. Yeah, no, no. And let's see. Oh, these are in 96. I don't remember these. One's like a purpley monster. One's dressed as Ronald. My 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 mother in law has that one on the bottom left at her house with that with like the green outfit. Yeah, it's it like, kind of looks like a dinosaur. Yeah, that she has I've seen that one at her house. Oh, here we go. It shows uh spider, rock star, fairy princess, dragon, hmm. alien monster, and Ronald. So these are in ninety six. Sure Which one would you have wanted the most when you were a kid? I mean, probably that dragon, dude. I'm thinking that dragon's the best. I would have been. I would have felt so gypped if I got that fairy princess. I'd be pissed. Or even the rock star. He's like, meh. Nah, green he's, hair. Green I, like, I like the rock star. He's cool. But the classic ones for sure is sweet hair. Or the or the Ronald McDonald one. I'd be mad about. <laughs> I always hate it when I got a girl toy. Like, no, that would be my luck. I would go and I'd want the vampire or the or the mum or the mummy or the Frankenstein, and they'd give me the witch, and I'd be like, "Ugh!" You're like, "No, I don't want the witch. I want something cool." <laughs> what we got, man? He's saying McDonald's in the '90s will forever be unmatched. I agree. They were so spot on with promotions and good quality toys. That's right. Plus, they had the uh, the playpen area. Or play, what would you call it? The uh, it's not a pen, but the play play area. Retro cart collector says he always wanted to collect those nuggets. Maybe one day. I mean, I'm sure you could find them at the swap meets. I'm sure they got. There's always bins of like the McDonald toys at all the swap meets, or there's always eBay too. That is Just true. Break down and run to eBay. <laughs> you know what? Next time I go to Toy Federation, I'll look through the big bins and see what I can find. See if you could pull out any of the. Yes, I did yeah. find because we did a we did do a full episode of like McDonald's toys, um, the run of all the toys, and mm-hmm. I forgot where I was. It was at one of the gaming conventions or something, and I came across the the cars we were talking about. I forget if it was Bugs yeah. Buddy or like Frackle Rock or something. Yeah, where it's like they're on one side, and then you flip it over. I think that was Tiny Tunes. Or, tiny or it might have been Fraggle Rock. I think Fraggle Rock was in some too. Nice. See you, Blade Bones. Thanks for jumping in on the live here. Appreciate you being there. Have a good um, night. Another thing we could talk about, unless there was something you were wanting to talk about earlier before we jumped off the McDonald's. Uh, well, it's still food related. Okay. Because I got something too. A little old thing right here, Cole. Oh, we were already on the same page. Count Chocula. I got a box right here picked up. Well, actually, the Fra- wife got me this one. Frankenberry. Count Chocula. <laughs> Definitely love, a staple for sure. I love those use. commercials, man. I will, oh, yeah, just, I will legit watch monster cereal commercials all day long. That would be fun to do. Um, like if you're having a Halloween party and yes. just put on 90s commercials, like on the TV in the background as a thing, that'd be cool. I would do that at a party if I had one. Maybe next year. We'll it's crazy <laughs> that those actually go back to the 70s. Right, yeah. That far, and the design hasn't changed too much of the count itself. I love it. I, I, I've, I need to go get a few more boxes before the season's over with, but they don't last long at my house. For like two days, and they're gone. Jeez. Frankenberry. You guys having cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Heck yeah, well, my kids, man. Between me and my kids, they're just gone. Yeah, I haven't gotten, I feel like too, at the store currently, so many cereals are jumping on the spooky bandwagon. Oh, yeah, I don't like that, man. I feel like that's, I don't know. I don't like that. In the 90s are right. I haven't had cereal in so long. 
Well, I mean, you're in the not you like the nineties. Why not? <laughs> what's up, Linda? Linda, the game of girls here. Yeah, what's your who who had Count Chocolate? Who enjoyed that? We got Count Chocolate, Booberry. You got Did you um, ever see the guy that was obsessed with Booberry on no. YouTube? What? No. Oh, there's this dude that was like obsessed with you Boo Booberry. And he bought it. He bought like as much as he could so he could eat it all year long. It's a crazy <laughs> episode. I think it was on MTV. Oh, it's like my obsession or something like that. Yeah. One of those shows. Probably poop blue all year long. Well, it's better that than the uh what was the caramel apple lady? Oh, Carmela Creeper? Carmela Creeper. She's she's back this year, but I'm hoping she goes by the wayside. <laughs> I want fruity yummy mummy and fruit brute back. But with original flavors. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. The werewolf was a uh, yeah. fruit brute. Yes. But, but yeah, now everything, if you go to the store, it's like Lucky Charms is spooky. Uh, uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Spooky. Spooky. Tricks. A bunch of wannabes. They're like, just add some marshmallows. Even Captain ghost. Crunch tries to get spooky milk, but they need to stick to Christmas. That's original Captain Crunch. That's Christmas true. They crunch. do both. Yeah, Christmas Crunch, and they did this this spooky one. I feel like that one maybe turned my milk green. Yes, Christmas Crunch though feels original because they've done that since the eighties. Okay. Ho ho ho! I'm ho, ho hungry. Anyway, we'll do that in about two months. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what else did I put on my list here of that costume in the nineties? McDonald's stories. Yep. The food there. The commercials too. Yeah. Oh, dude, what's your favorite? Probably the Frankenstein. I can't remember if it's Doritos or yes. if it's Pepsi. It's Doritos. It's a Doritos one. I do remember the Pizza Head Halloween commercials. So my favorite one is the one where the vampire eats the Reese cup. Oh, right. And he's like, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. And it has like two vampire fangs in it. Loved that. Why was that so cool? What a great idea. Those are great. I got to look up to show you guys, if you're watching here on YouTube, the the Pizza Head commercials. (laughs) Commercials Halloween. Literally a slice of pizza that that they dressed up, right? If you remember, we're seeing this here, but was now it the, the pizza head show? Hey, everybody, I'm done trick or treating. I'm not going to go for a scuff press pizza pizza. Yay! Not yet, pizza head. There's one more place to go. Well, I don't think anyone's home. Sure, there is. Oh, trick or treat. Let's go upstairs. <laughs> it's a pizza cutter. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a mummy. The cat will be happy to give you a lift. See you next time. It's for Pizza Hut. Yeah, I love it. Amazing. Classic. <laughs> That's a good one for sure. So 90s. He deserved his own game like the Noid. Make it happen still. It's still time. That's why Pizza Hut went, went the wayside. They're, they're marketing. Yep. It's not just as good. Blowing it. Bring Pizza Hut back. Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut will prosper. <laughs> <laughs> um, would any other commercials stand out for you in the 90s for Halloween stuff no not the really uh, uh, oh probably oh. the uh, I was going to say maybe the Dunkin Donuts commercial I don't remember that one I'm sure I would if I saw it I'll, I'll look one up I love that Reese's one though. that one's the one I remember the most but I also remember the the Frankenstein one where he's like going to get the Doritos and, and it might be Doritos and Pepsi Russ Oh, just a combination, yeah. Yeah. Now I want Doritos and Pepsi. Um, let's see. We don't have to watch the the whole thing here. Of I think it has. They're making like Munchkins or something. They're in a lab as like a mad scientist. Oh, okay. Introducing a haunting collection of minis for Halloween. Oh, so they're mini donuts. <laughs> minis are a fraction the size of our regular donuts, but they have the power to attract very interesting guests to your Halloween parties. 
I mean, the production on this, they went all oh, out. Oh, wow. Yeah, they went hardcore. Freaking zombies. Minis. Minis. Mad scientist laboratory and everything. Love it. Oh, Love Manny's it. talking about creepy crawlers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a creepy crawler machine? I did not. But my friend Mark did. There we go. We used to make them at his house all the time. Certainly a fun one for sure. You could build up a whole bunch. You could help with decoration if you were having a Halloween party. You're like, Russ, go make us some uh, creepy crawlers for the Halloween party. Yeah. But there was a there was a, a toy line called Mad Scientist, and I had some of their stuff that turned like glowing goop. Yes. That was pretty radical. That was a big uh everything goopy or like cooking stuff was was real big in the nineties with the toys. Get yep. your light bulb oven ready. That's right. <laughs> that is um, right. Candies. Maybe candies in the nineties. What were people what were people giving out? Trick or treating. What were you getting? Mm, those crappy little candies that are wrapped in like black, brown, and like orange paper that no one knows <laughs> what the heck it is. They're like it's like taffy or something it's like, like that. It peanut buttery taffy bucket. and it tastes like crap. It does taste pretty bad. <laughs> and uh those um there were these, these little like monsters. It was almost like candy cigarette type material, but they were flat and they had like monster faces on them. And they came in like these little boxes. Okay. Is that, does okay. that ring a bell? I think I slightly remember that. Um, you know, classic stuff like sticker bars and. I mean, I will say I was surprised. Tootsie Rolls. I always hated Tootsie Rolls. Like, yeah. Yeah, just give me some real candy. Just, um, just give me a Reese's peanut butter. I mean, I pepper. chewed the crap out of those Tootsie Rolls. Don't get me wrong, but like, I'd have rather had something else. I will say it stood out when you got the little like coupons. Mm -hmm. For like a Frosty or like something McDonald's related and stuff. And I'm like, oh, what is this? Like, it's like a bonus. I know. Oh, I got next time we go out for fast food. I get a special treat for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever get pennies? No, never got pennies. Never got toothpaste. What about all the urban legends? Oh, razor blades and yeah, check, let me check your candy. Make sure nobody put razor blades in your candy. Like, what a horrible person! If you ever put razor blades in someone's candy, you deserve terrible things. Absolutely, it's like, jeez, no way. And definitely nowadays, it's like, no way. I would say, back in the nineties, you're trick or treating, right? You can. Some people maybe they did fresh baked cookies or brownies, like yeah. Didn't really think too much of it other th other than this razor blade thing and apples and all of that. But right. I feel like now it's like never accept any fresh baked. Oh, stuff exactly. It has to be wrapped, concealed. Like, no way. That's not happening. Exactly. Linda got uh, dollars a couple times. Nice. They were like, all right, we could give out 50 bucks. We got 50 kids coming. See, Linda was smart. She said, I went to the rich neighborhoods and got the dollars and full large candy bars. She wasn't messing around with those cheap skates, giving out the the no name candy that Jay was eating. <laughs> I will say, my mom dropped me off at my um, aunt's house, and I did their neighborhood. Um, I would do mine early, then we'd go to my aunt's, and I'd get to do that as well. And they they were in a um, more or higher, I guess, richer neighborhood. So yeah, worked out worked out for me. Cool, eating candy for days. What else? Um, what about TV? Regular series? I know we talked about the obviously scary ones. I mean, like specials, like the I remember, special. like specials, like um, you know, like uh, Charlie Brown, Great Pumpkin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what else was on there? You know, it was always Scooby Doo. It was always cool when like uh. Regular cartoons had like little specials, like Tiny Toons might have had a Halloween special, or um, Bobby's World might have had Halloween themed episodes. Or even you could think back to like TGI Friday. I'm sure there was like a Family Matters. Halloween yeah, special. yeah. I like, always oh, liked okay. that when it was like when they were like acknowledging the season. Right, right. You're like, oh, so it's like happening now, like the timeline. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I always thought that was fun for sure. Garfield, you know. Oh, the Elvira TV TGIF, yeah. 
And just like every little commercial, like even like a, I'm just thinking of like Christmas commercials, but like they would throw like little Halloween themed things into commercials to make it more fun. Boy Meets World Halloween specials. I bet Topanga was always dressed up pretty wild. <laughs> I wonder, hey, I'll look that up and see. I bet you will, Russ. <laughs> Boy Meets World Halloween episode. And then there was Sean. Boy Meets World Season 5, Episode 17. I guess they were kind of, it looks like they were almost going the um, scream route. Let's see if I could share it here, where Sean is kind of dressed up as this alien, uh, alien um, skeleton-ish type figure. Let's see what it says for the plot. After a fight between the recently broken up Corey and Topanga caused by Sean escalates in Mr. F- uh, Finney's class, Corey, Topanga, Sean, and Sh- uh, Angela, and Kenny are given detention. Finney leaves and the map screen pulls up, revealing no one gets out alive. Written on the chalkboard in blood. <laughs> Jeez. The group finds themselves locked in the classroom and a creepy janitor appears in the hallway and refuses to let them out. After Eric and Jack appear and unlock the room, the lights briefly go out, and Kenny is murdered by being stabbed through the head with a pencil, oh, gosh. in reference to the then-recently premiered South Park. Wow. Oh my gosh, you killed Kenny. That's pretty neat. Yeah, we'll have to see see if I can stream that on there. Boy That's Meets fun. World. Halloween episode. 1998. February 27th, 98, is that what this is? Uh, yep. That's wow. what originally aired. So it didn't originally air, I guess, in October. At that it, point, I was no longer watching Boy Meets World. Um, yeah, I can't say when I was watching it. Let's see, I'd still be in uh, junior high. I think I'd be in 11th grade, February. Oh, wait, 98. Yeah, yeah. no, you're right. No, 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 no. February 98 would be going into. Yeah, yeah, like no, 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 no. The right? second half of the year. Yeah, I would be 11th grade. You, it wasn't much long after that that I heard Blink-182 for the first time. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Good month. Just saying. Just saying. Got to get it in. There you go. <laughs> Jay, Jay's always talking the Blink. Got to. Um, You guys got anything else for? For 90s, what are we missing? We did clo- uh, close uh, costumes, treats, commercials, commercials, TV shows, Happy Meals, Happy Meal toys. What, what uh, movies came out that that year? Or I guess I guess that year is yeah, 10 years Halloween, a decade. Halloween 90 movies. Halloween 90 movies. Obviously, Ernest Scared Stupid. Okay. Came out. I could bring up the list here. There's a whole, whole slew of them if we're doing a decade. Scream, the, probably. The Craft, the witchcraft movie with the girls. Yeah. Um, we got Halloween H two O. I remember seeing that movie. That was awesome. It's got a. Uh, it's got a um, cool G in it. It's got a uh, Josh Hartnett, right? Yeah. Um. Let's see. Casper came out. I got that movie 95. on DVD. Sleepy Hollow with uh, Johnny Depp. Don't think I ever saw that one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Obviously, The Nightmare Before Christmas that came out in 93. The greatest movie because it celebrates two holidays in one. Double double hitter. Uh, Idle Hands. With Tom DeLonge in it. And I think Offspring is in it as well. Serving up cheeseburgers. (laughs) That's a good one. I know what you did last summer. House on Haunted Hill. Yep. Adam's Family. Hocus Pocus. Classic for sure. Um, Halloween Town. i never seen that one. Yeah, me either. That's more for, I guess, the younger crowd. Um, did Frank and Weenie? Oh, no, that's that's way later. I'm like, wait a minute. This is just related ones. Gotcha. Yeah, um, good yeah, enough. pretty good ones, and then obviously your classic ones. Arachnophobia. 
Army of Darkness, Candyman, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, the scary, scary ones. Yeah. And then, so I just just watched this one here. Me and Steph watched The Frighteners like two days ago. Yeah. Yep. That's a good one. Oh, and Tales from the Hood. <laughs> you ever watch this one, Jay? 95. I don't think I ever saw it, but so, I remember it. Tales from the Hood just plays off of that um, Tales from the Crypt, right? Instead of having a Crypt Keeper, they, they go to this... Um, uh, what is it called? The uh, mortuary? No. Uh, where do you go when when you're having a service for someone that passed? Uh, mortuary. I thought that I thought that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and they meet meet the guy there, and um, essentially it, it acts like Dale's from the crypt, but based in the hood. I don't know. Yeah. It's a good one. They made a few of them. Blair Witch Project. That was a good one. Oh, and uh, from dust dust till dawn. With the uh, what the heck is his name? I forgot his name. Who was in that? I don't know. Twilight Zone. Nexus Creed cried. Said, is it Creed? Creed? Yeah, I can't. I can't read. Just watched a great. It's a great pumpkin. I have that sealed somewhere. I need to go open it up and watch it. DVD or VHS? DVD. DVD. <laughs> Found it at the thrift store and thought, sweet. I nice. know it's not scratched. And I, I want to say, do they do a uh, Twilight Zone marathon? I wonder if it's on one of the channels. I'm sure they would. I don't have cable, so I don't know. Right. I'm sure that was a thing for Halloween, though. Twilight Zone. So oh, probably great. back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, retro. Uh, yeah. Antonio was it Antonio Bendez. Antonio. I'm pretty sure that's who it was in from dust till dawn. I'm bringing a look it up here. From dust till dawn. We got Quentin Tarantino, Summer Hayek, Harvey right. Kettle. And George Clooney's in it. So maybe was, maybe I was thinking, yeah, no, I guess George Clooney, yeah. 1996. There you go. I will say a lot of these movies I try to try to watch, it's it stinks nowadays. They're like, where's it streaming? What service is it on? Can't you like when's it coming on cable? <laughs> so I could watch it. I forgot about Erie, Indiana. We so when when you uh computer broke and you left, we did discuss Erie Indiana. And I, I don't think I ever seen it before, but it seemed really interesting. I remember it. And I definitely would uh would watch it now. It's similar to a Goosebumps or Are You Afraid of the Dark? Absolutely. Absolutely. The shinning, both versions. <laughs> Don't you be thinking about Willie between four and seven. That's my time. What, uh, what's both versions, though? What do you mean? I don't know. The only one I know of is, is Jack Nicholson. Right. I don't know. I don't know if there was another one. Did they have another one? The I know one, there was a sequel. The other one is the Simpsons episode for me. <laughs> <laughs> Watch both of those. Oh, there's a TV version of it? Uh, oh, wait. No, I'm thinking of uh, something else. Just kidding. I'm thinking of... I'm thinking of Bates Motel. Oh, uh... Is it, it's, it's not called Bates Motel. What is it called? The Bates Motel is the name of the series I was thinking of that was on Netflix. Oh, oh, oh I see, I see. Um... TV miniseries because he hated the movie. Well, that's stupid. You know, it'd be scary if Jay found free time to beat Chrono Trigger. Boom! Yep, that'd be terrifying. <laughs> is One day, is. I gotta. The problem is, I won't even get into it. <laughs> One day. One day. I'm, I'm like I'm like James Rolfe. Time. I don't have enough time. You know, everybody makes fun of James for always complaining about not having enough time to do this. It's certainly tough. You had to be time management with like me. having kids. Not everybody can stuff. be like Russ and do what he wants all day long, every day, and somehow make it work. <laughs> I got too much cleaning to do. Always cleaning. Always cleaning. My OCD of cleaning won't let me. It renders me useless. Fair enough. There you go. 
I don't know where we're going with the rest of this episode. <laughs> the scary facts of being an adult. I, don't know. Uh, I will say, check out my cool shirt I got from uh, Bull Airs. It's got their mascot, uh, Tommy Toretto, uh, wearing a Jason mask. Cool. Cool Airs. Bull Airs. So, rocking that. We'll see. We'll see. Halloween, certainly fun in the 90s, I think, with uh, commercials getting you hyped up for Halloween, movies coming on, and just all the promotions and stuff geared towards everything. Maybe just because now we consume our media everywhere where it's on apps, TikTok, YouTube. Some people have cable and this and that. It's almost cheap in media, though. Like, what do you mean? Like, like I'll be watching a movie and it's, and I can't pay attention to it because I'm looking at a TikTok. Oh, I see. Okay. It's yeah, like, yeah. I don't, you know what I mean? Like back in the day, that would never happen. I'd just be like focused on the movie. Yeah. Where you're now, it's just easier to like, uh, or it's like, lost my int- or it's like, I'll watch interest. a YouTube video. I'll get about two and a half minutes in. And I'm like, eh, I'm done with it. I'm moving on to the next video. <laughs> I got the gist of it. Well, cause yeah, it ended up being a whole, whole like ordeal where, you're watching this movie on TV. Yeah. There's going to be commercials. And right. You can't skip them. So you just hopefully, hopefully they're fun commercials that you're like, yeah, that was neat to watch. Like, cool. It's a uh, Frankenstein, you know, breaking into a Pepsi truck and this and that. And then you go back, get into your movie. I wonder what other commercials are going to come up then that are themed for Halloween. Well, plus when you were a kid, like every, Every holiday was so exciting. So any little thing that like gave you that little bit of excitement was like mm-hmm. added to the cake. And I feel like kids miss out on that today. Like my kids are always like hitting the skip button when the commercials come on. I was like, hold on a minute. That might be a good one. Like, let's just see what's going on here with this. Maybe it's fun. Maybe I've seen time into it. Like I said, I've seen videos on YouTube where it's a compilation. It'd be like two hours and it's just like commercials from the 90s. They're like, oh, I love those. I'll, I'll watch I'll watch like 80s Christmas commercials all the time. Yeah. And I just like and it just I just wrap myself in a warm, fuzzy blanket <laughs> and I just reminisce and wish it was the 80s again. I dig it. But we can't go back. You could only. Jump in the warp pipe and, <laughs> and go forward. <laughs> yeah, I think that sums up our 90s, 90s Halloween for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? We did have some some comments that we can check out from the uh, our social medias. What did you say? What Springfield, you let's say? hear from you. What did you say? Springfield, let's hear from you. Let's see what you guys had to say on the internet. We had... On our I'm going to YouTube... glare into the camera while you read this. We'll go to Facebook. I had a, one comment on the Facebook page here. Jennifer. She said, the one that stood out to me... Wait. Nope. Scroll up. There we go. Zach. <laughs> Zach Schnick. Zach says, Goosebumps, the haunted mask. I remember sitting down with my cousins and watching this back in like 1996. It honestly freaked us the heck out for a while. LOL. And that's Iowa Retro Gamer Dad. I know who Jack Schneck is. Jack Schneck. Jack Schneck. I mean, yeah, definitely the mass, like how it ends with like, she's so frightened that the mass is stuck on her face. And then she finally gets it off and then it leaves a cliffhanger where her younger brother then puts on the mask and you're like, no, you just got it off. So what are you doing? They did do a sequel of the book. I don't know if they did a sequel on the TV series, though. They might have. And then what do we got on our YouTube community tab? It's a 90s Halloween River City Ransom. Who remembers the teacher? From the Black Lagoon series of books, you had the teacher, the cafeteria lady, principal, etc. I always loved reading those during Halloween. I, I don't me. know what he's talking about. Yeah, I never heard of that before. What's what's reading? What's reading? <laughs> what's a book? What's a book? I don't know. 
Uh, Dragon Punch Dave says, hey, I have some really great memories of Halloween back in the late 80s, early 90s. You know, the McDonald's Halloween McNugget commercials. Yeah. Those Halloween McNugget buddy toys and the awesome glow-in-the-dark candy buckets they used to give out with the Happy Meal. They were the best. I also remember getting together with my friends, grabbing our BMX bikes, and meeting up to go trick-or-treating together. And of course, we couldn't miss watching the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror and the Charlie Brown Halloween special. Those were the days. Hmm. Yes. Willy Wampa. I enjoyed reading Goosebumps. There was a youth horror book series for Star Wars called Galaxy of Fear that were pretty fun as well. Now, I'd never heard of those before. My parents also somehow managed to have my sister and I coordinating costumes. One year, I was Paul Bunyan and my sister was the Blue Ox. Another year, I was the Tin Man and my sister went as the Scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. Trick-or-treating was so awesome back then. It's not the same now. I feel my kids are missing out. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what it is. Like, technically, we went last year with Gwen, but she could barely walk trick-or-treating. This year, she'll be definitely more mobile um, and hopefully can hold a you know a bucket or something to put some candies in. Um, but it'll be interesting to see as the years go how she thinks of it. I just saw a thing pop up on my, on my phone the other day. Let's see if I can mm-hmm. find it. And it was all these cool pictures of all the Halloweens we've celebrated around here. Let's see if I can find it. Now I'll read the last comment there while you're checking it out. So AJ says, well, over in the New York, New Jersey area, WPIX Channel 11, New York's movie station, would play horror movies every night double feature sometimes in an event called Shocktober. This is a core memory of my preteen years. I learned about so many great 80s, 90s horror movies because of that, many of which I still watch every October. Sadly, WPIX is no longer a thing. Not sure what it is now, but it became the WB at some point. Yeah, certainly getting those like movie marathons or fun tv shows where they're like oh let's check out uh you know a couple movies tonight is great the scariest for me movie for me for a long time was candy man with the bees and you say his name in the mirror mm-hmm. much like bloody mary <laughs> bloody mary all right here you go can you watch this okay Does it have music? I don't know. Is it like a, a photo compilation that it made? Yeah, it should be. I don't know how washed out it is. Oh, we got some videos too. So these are all your kids dressed up as uh Throughout the years. Yeah, and like all so all the kids in our neighborhood were friends with all the families. Yeah. So they usually always get together and it's and, and like a pirate cowboy. Yeah. My son was Sobble from Pokemon. But anyway, oh, okay. it's not really having the effect I was hoping, but <laughs> blast. Blast. Blast it. Is your phone small or your hands big? Well, my phone is small, but my wife says I have big hands. There you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sweet. Well, that sums up the 90s, I think, pretty well of Halloween. All the fun stuff that was happening then. And it's just not the same anymore. <laughs> my scary large hands are coming at you. Dun, dun, dun. Well, take your hands and uh, place them on your phone, and you can give us a call over at 949 682 9277. Leave us a voicemail. We'll play it on the show. It could be about future topics you want us to cover, or if you see what topic we're covering and you want to chime in on that, you can do that as or my well. Freakishly large hands. 
<laughs> check out our website, theweeklywarpipe.com. We got all our episodes on there. You can check out some merch. We got coffee mugs, stickers, magnets, buttons, and all the fun stuff. Do a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters of Dan and Nicole's Treasures Untold, Joe Sheevy, Trace Living Good, Samantha Chang, Rodney Torres, Retroholic 16, and Austin Mills for support of the show. And shout out to bullairs.com. Check out their awesome stock of custom shoes and clothes. You can save 10%. Use the code WARP10. Love it, Jay, with your Halloween mask. I hate this mask. Today, when I, I went to, Matt, I went to a, a Halloween store. And I actually saw ones that were like bent like this. And I was like, there you go. Should have bought one. Oh, well. Should have bought one. $7.99. Sweet. Well, as always, guys, we appreciate you jumping in the warp pipe with us. Going back. And we'll see you guys on the next level.